Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the What the Football channel. This is the BH and Scrubber show. Today, uh, we're uh, starting off. This is our preseason, so we're starting off this show. We're going to do a 90-man show, kind of look at uh, who our uh, definites are going to be, who our backups are going to be, and who's on the bubble. And uh, we're excited this year. I think we've got a great team, and it wouldn't be the BH and Scrubber show without my boy, BH. Welcome, BH. Hey, man. Good to be back. Our third season? Yeah, man. three for us. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, yeah, man, it's exciting. Um, this team should be really good. Um, gosh, we're bringing back so many guys. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's going to be interesting with this 90-man show is that we kind of know pretty much. We've got some new additions for sure, but – we kind of know who the front line is going to be. Now we got to decide, you know, those few players that are going to come in and fill out this roster. And uh, and that's kind of fun, man. We've got some e exciting guys to talk about. Camp camp reports are good. You know, I, I know they had a skirmish yesterday, but even that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're getting out there ready to go hit somebody. So they're getting a little, you know, rambunctious. But, uh, hey, man, let's just go ahead and hit it. I mean, let's go easy. Let's start with the quarterback. Sure. That's a simple one. <laughs> and Sam Howell, yeah, he's the starter. And, uh, you know, they ran out and got uh, Jacoby Brissett. I mean, I just think that's a, a great way to go. I think you said, you know, he's a he's a guy that's, you know, not going to be going crazy to start and be bitter. But at the same time, if you need him, <clears throat> he's, you know, he's not going to be Carson Wentz. He can actually come in and lead this team and have some success. Yeah. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I think we're set up really well. I mean, every, you know, I mean, you're, you're taking a chance with the second year guy and how, but I mean, we, you know, we watched so much of his preseason. I've watched so much of his college. We saw him in that last game against Dallas. I mean, the tools are there, man. So, I mean, the, of course you got to wait and see what he can do, but I mean, who do we, I mean, I guess we have Jake Fromm as the number three, yeah, um, and then there was that uh, McDermott know. guy or whoever he was, but uh, I don't think uh, he's not going to make it. So the way what I like about this year yeah. too is if you're going to go with Howell first, that's fine with me. I think the couple of years before this, we had uh, Fitzpatrick, the veteran. Then you had Wentz, the veteran, going first, and they put it out. And then we had to rely on Taylor Heineke. Love Taylor Heineke. Did the best he could for our team, but uh, this year. It's instead of going with the journeyman like the Jacoby Brissett first and then having Howell go second, start with Howell first. If he peters out in the one or two or yeah. third game and he's not looking good, then Jacoby can go in and do the job. Whereas before, if our guys weren't looking too good like Wentz, then you got to go to Taylor. And and as good as, you know, I love Taylor again, but he just wasn't it. This way, you're covered. I think Jacoby can do the job. So. Yeah, happy about it. I totally agree. So I think we're really set there. Now let's just move on to the O line, which yeah. um, you know, got a bit of a shake up. You know, we've uh, we I think you know Charles Leno is still back at left tackle, and then they moved Sam Cosby to right guard. But look yeah. at all the other changes. We you know we got Andrew Wiley in from KC. Got a uh, Nick Gates, the free agent, yeah. who at this point looks like he's going to start, um, and I. To me, right off the bat, all these are improvements. Yes. You know, I mean, nothing against Chase Roulier, but he couldn't stay healthy. Um, Gates is proven. I like his style. I think stylistically they went with Gates and Andrew Wiley because they could sort of do that, the kind of the blocking scheme that the enemy kind of wants. He wants guys, he doesn't want 340-pound bulldozers. He wants guys that can seal your first man, get to the second level. You know, he wants guys that can be on the move. He wants guys who can set up and who are mobile, who can get to the screens. You know, in other words, you know what I mean? You let your yeah. guy in and then you're upfield and you're taking out the first guy you see. And I think that was a stylistic kind of thing. Uh, so I think that's great. So, but what are we going to do at left guard, Scrubber? Uh, who do we got? You know, yeah, Sadiq. Uh, on my depth chart here, they got Chris Paul as number one. So Sadiq, I think, I don't know if he was injured, but I think he missed a practice or two. So yeah, he was uh, hurt. So he's hurt, and that's his mo. 
he can't stay healthy and he's i mean he's iffy at best but then you got to go with chris paul this would be his second season now i've heard some good things about him maybe if you squish him in there between lucas and gates he can do something um uh, so i i don't know who else you would throw in there so uh if it's gates yeah. first and uh and Sadiq doesn't work. Who's your third Loffenberg or somebody like that? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I go with Gates first. Yeah, I, might as well get him going and running. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. I think so. And I think I mean when they when they brought Gates in, they said you're the starting center. I mean, yeah. he even said there was there was no there was no you know sometimes they say things like oh yeah of course you know you're gonna start but you know there's you know it's always a competition. They were pretty adamant, and I. I mean, Tyler Larson and uh, Ricky Stromberg, I, I like it. I like the depth. I mean, it's kind of like our quarterbacks. I like the three guys we got. I think they're fine. Uh, Chris Paul's getting good uh, reports in camp. Um, you know, maybe Sadiq gets better. Um, another guy that's really, really stood out. There's two guys I want to talk to you since we're talking about guard real quick. Uh, Mason Brooks. Yes. Undrafted free agent is uh, – Putting on a show, him and uh, Fedarian Mathis had a couple one-on-ones. He uh, put Fedarian back down. Um, the thing to remember about this kid is um, he's an undrafted free agent, but he was a priority undrafted free agent, meaning I think he got the highest uh, contract that you can give an undrafted free agent. So that's like that's saying something. That's a guy you wanted. So he's showing up really good. And then there's a guy, Jared Jones Smith. I was, you know, listening to a lot of people. He's a former tackle, came from the USF, uh, I mean the XFL. Mm. Uh, but they're moving him. Uh, they're moving him to guard, and they say he's been looking real good. So it, with those two guys doing good, Paul doing good. I mean the the, it's, you know, my, the writing might be on the wall for Sadiq, um, who personally I think he's had plenty of time to prove himself. Nothing against the guy personally, but. Right. It just sounds like so many other guys are stepping up. It just might be time for him to move on. Right on. So, so usually, yeah, I know coach likes to keep coach would probably like to keep 10 of them on the O line. You know, he yeah. may only get nine depending on what's going on in the receiver core and how many running backs you want to keep and that kind of stuff. So that gives you five starters and then four or five behind them. So that really, if he only keeps nine, some of them guys, Loffenberg, uh, there's some other guys in here. They barely yeah. got names, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be on the practice squad. Mm -hmm. You know, they won't make it. So I, you know, I think, yeah, and it all goes to health of your unit. So like you said, they could do nine easy. If everyone comes out of camp strong and good. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like the backup. So. Yeah, I mean, that's a good group. You know, I think we got in the future, we got to look for a, a left tackle. Uh, Charles Leno's still doing pretty good, but he's a guy. But for this year, Charles Leno will be fine. Yeah. Looking so, good. well, let's let's move on to those uh, wide receivers. Um, basically, um, boy, what a group. Same group as last year. You know, Jahan was a rookie. Uh, unfortunately, had that hamstring thing that kept him out for, I don't know, seems like six or seven weeks. But, boy, when that kid played, all he did was perform. You know, he yeah. didn't look like a rookie at all to me. So, I mean, I'm I'm super happy with those guys. And then I guess, you know, Diami Brown is a guy who I think is kind of a lock for the number four spot. I, I mean, I hear he's doing pretty good. But, man, after that, um, there's there's a lot of – I mean, to me, it's going to be a brawl. I yeah. mean, where how do you finish out the wide receiver room? Yeah, um, you know, you know, you still got Dax, so and he's possibly yep. your punt returner as well. So he serves a dual purpose there. So and people are talking up Alan Casimir or Casimir Allen. Yep, and uh, Casimir Allen, and he could be a punt returner too, supposedly. So if he's looking better, you could yep. keep him. Mitchell Tinsley you got Marcus Kemp. Uh, those kind of yep. uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Bryson Tremaine. Yeah, you're really looking at yep. the far end if they're only going to keep six or seven guys. Um, you know, yep. I like Dax. You know, the only thing he could do on our punt returns is catch it. He secured the ball. 
but his run back yeah. wasn't all that great. So Diami, Dax, maybe Marcus Kemp. I haven't heard too much about him. So uh what he Yeah, Marcus okay. Kemp. And I know that they they brought in uh Byron Pringle, another former um Kansas City Chief. I mean, I don't know if they're serious about it. Those guys, you know, maybe they want guys who know the enemy system, but it's a big room full of guys. But like you said, it sort of comes down to, you know, who can do both, who can be a dynamic receiver and still, you know, do punts or kicks. Cause you know, coach always wants guys that can, can do both. So um, I haven't heard much about um, uh, what's his name though. Uh, uh, Casimir Allen, he sort of started off good. Maybe he's dinged up or something. Haven't heard a lot. And I do know, I did read some stuff too, where they were lining a lot of guys up for kicks and punts. So there's mm-hmm. still, I mean, even Antonio Gibson, I don't like that, but I mean, they were just putting a lot of guys out there to show, Hey, this is kind of an open competition. So, yeah. but I mean, for me, I think this is one of the best groups we have mostly because our top three, I guess top four with Diami are, are they're super solid. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I just like that. There's that group is really good and they're super dynamic and they're the kind of guys that can do bubble screens, you know, you, you know what I mean? The, the end arounds. What do you call those? Jet when they sweep. come across the form jet sweeps. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean, Eric B has got to love that because we don't have any of those six foot four, 200, you know, 20 Mike Evans type guys. All our guys can, can go to the slot, go outside jet sweep bubble screen. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the defenses have to be ready for these guys. And that's what Eric Bannon, likes to do. He wants to put his players in, in advantageous situations. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That builds, it builds on group. what you said early, uh, earlier about him doing the jet sweep, doing these screens, bubble screens and all this kind of stuff. That's what you were talking about. The O-line needing to be maneuverable. You got a guy like uh, Curtis Samuel is really good. Well, if you can just screen him out to the side and get him out in the open, that's where he's going to do his best work. So yep. um, I, I like, I'm not really a run the screen guy, but <laughs> yeah. never worked for any of the teams I've liked before, but teams who can execute the screen and know how to work it in and make it work, it works. So, yeah. but uh, you know, last year and the year before it, we were just doing a screen, just like the Seahawks used to do just, just to do a screen it wasn't really part of your part of your scheme it was just a thing you did and it never fucking works you know what i mean but if you're going to use it as part of your scheme and use it against the defense then it becomes something that's that's actually going to function and and uh give you some benefit so i agree yeah like you said it's like you know like they well we got to throw it in the mix just to give the defense a look and then a lot of times a screen is nothing but a a blocking breakdown and the quarterback has to dump off that's Mm. not that's a dump off that's not really a screen so you know so yeah so yeah the word is the enemy likes to design those things in such a specific way that there's a lot of thought into it not just you run over there we'll do the screen he does a lot of different things so it's super exciting so let's move on man to our uh we've got two rooms i've got the running backs and the tight end so let's look at our running backs um this will be interesting. We got our two top dogs and Antonio Gibson and, and Brian uh, Robinson. Right. All indicators. Robinson will be the early down guy. Um, you know, go in there and bang heads and use them on third and short and goal line. And then uh, Antonio Gibson is pretty excited because we've always said he was never utilized properly, never used right. Just and and he fits what the enemy likes to do. You know, he'll run the enemy will run him up the middle then get him out on a screen, put him on the, put him on the slot and run him as a receiver. Um, so he'll finally get used. So I'm kind of excited about that. I think, I mean, I think I'm, that's who I'm most excited about. And I think Brian Robinson is just a stud. He's just only going to get better. Yep. Yeah. He's coming off a gunshot from last <laughs> yeah. year. You know what I'm saying? Know. Missed four yeah. games. And he still re- did really, really good. So yep. uh, yeah, those two guys are definitely in. And then we got uh, Williams, and then that new guy, Rodriguez. Yeah. And then, uh, our boy, uh, uh, Patterson, Jarrett Patterson. So, yeah, you're probably going to keep three of those guys. So, who, you know, who's the third guy you keep? It's either Williams, probably, or Rodriguez. Then you got to put one of them on the practice squad and probably get rid of one. Ouch. So, yeah. 
I know. And Jarrett, I mean, Patterson, God almighty, he didn't play any, at all last year. They put him in the Cowboy game, and he just was all world. Did everything we wanted. They threw screens. He ran up the middle. He did an end around. He Third and short. I mean, I, I, it's so surprising to me, that kid. I feel bad for him, man. But, yeah. you know, to his credit, he sat for 16 games. And in game 17, he rolled in with his head in the game. So, And yeah. there is, they did bring in Derek Gore. Another former chief, oh, that's right. so sort of. I'm kind of wondering what you know. Maybe they want to see someone in camp who knows the system a little better, and in that way, if you have a tie, let's say Derek Gore and uh, Jonathan Williams, who we love, mm -hmm. have the same skill set. Derek Gore might get the nod because he understands more what coach wants to do. But I, I don't consider you know I don't consider that a loss. I think we're really set with who yeah. we have our top two dogs and the rest of these guys are going to be, are going to be fine. And, and Jared Patterson, I don't know where he ends up, but he, I mean, he proved he can just come off the bench and play, dude. Yeah. I mean, I, I say, keep him, mm -hmm. and he's a great guy. So we'll, we'll have to see about that. Okay. Last but not least, man, tight ends. Um, has nothing's really changed, right? I mean, no. everyone, everyone's back from last year. Except Armani except Rogers. Except poor Armani, man. Yeah, yeah bummer. Yeah. Torn. What do you do? He, uh, Achilles. He's, uh, Achilles, yeah. That's a brutal one to come back from. Um, but, you know, talk about injuries. You know, Logan Thomas coming back from his injury. Cole Turner was banged up himself. Curtis Hodges. Uh, he had – he was hurt last year. So, we kind of have a lot of guys who are kind of coming back. John Bates is the one guy, the stud. You know, he's our inline blocking guy who can catch some passes. Uh so John's solid. Uh, you know, Logan, uh, I think his injury is one of those takes a year and a half to get over kind of injury. Uh, just like um, just like Chase, you know, because, you know, Logan had the ACL, the MCL, and both meniscus were all had to get done. And I'm sorry, man, no one comes back after that. And then Chase had, instead of Chase didn't really so much get the, the knee repair, he had knee knee reconstruction. So I'm just trying to make that comparison that it, not all the injuries are the same. And I think Logan's going to be great. I think he'll be fine. And then Cole Turner. I mean, come on, man, that kid showed so much potential. I mean, he really, in this offense, he could be something special. So what do you so, keep the three of them? You keep Bates, Logan and Hodges or Cole Turner and then put Hodges you know, on think, the, you keep three or do you keep four? I think you keep three and then you put Hodges and there's a guy, you know, Brandon Dillon, who I don't know a lot about, and you right. put them on the practice squad. Yeah, I mean, unless Kurt, I just don't see Curtis Hodges blowing up and taking over uh, of Cole Turner. And he, like you said, he missed all last year with the injury. He got injured early in the year. It's like his whole first year was a waste. He's practically a rookie. Yeah, put him on the practice squad. Give him time to develop. Sounds you know, good. See what he does. So, well, there's the offense, man. I think uh, that's a fine looking group. I know they're struggling a little in camp, but that's tough when you're learning your your side of the ball is learning a new offense and new terminology, and the defense has been running the same scheme for four years. That's uh, it. Kind of gives that D the advantage. So, uh, well, let's just move on to the D. What do you think? Sounds good. Let's do the front line. Obviously, okay. Who do we uh, got? Scrub. <laughs> <laughs> we got. Uh, Montez, and we got uh, Jonathan Allen, we got Deron Payne, and we got uh, 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 Chase. what's that guy? Chase, Chase Young. So, yep, Deron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm brain farting, but yeah, that's no, okay. dude. Incredible front line, incredible front line. So, with literally, great people backing them up, too. Yeah, Holy yeah. Crap. The, look at the look at the twos. Yeah, best front line, the best starting four in football, I think. Yeah. And uh, and boy, now that Chase is back, see, once again, he's, he's had all that time to get better. And uh, yeah, they're all just fantastic. Duran got paid, which is great. So, yeah, look at those backups, man. James Smith Williams, who played a lot last year, right? Yeah. Um, and we got Fedarian, who missed the whole year, which yep. that totally sucked. But now he's back. And John Ridgeway, the guy we stole from the Cowboys. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. And, you know, Ridgeway and, and Fredarian, just rookies. So they were just rookies last year. I mean, they're both coming into their second year. I tell you, ask any pro football player what it was like coming from their first and second years. Nothing like it. There's no comparison. 
you're just your head spinning when you come into camp when you're a rookie everything's fast you're learning all kinds of stuff it's crazy second year things just dial way down and now you're ready to play football so like you said man gosh man fa obata you know casey two hill uh and we've got the you know we got i mean kj K. henry Harris. yeah yeah he's a young guy he's a rook i mean we drafted him i mean how many defensive linemen do we keep? I mean, that's, I just mean, there's like 12 guys right there. Then you get Andre Jones, who we drafted. That's 13 guys. Not everybody can make that team. Maybe Benning Patoa, Abdullah Anderson. Mm, there's yeah. two guys they could move away from, but you still can't keep 12. No. You know, if, no. if you want to get, and almost always your draft picks make the team, but well, you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a bad, it's a good problem to have, right? Yes. Wait. Yeah. I mean, and so this is one squad where we're looking, I mean, first and second string are set. We're just looking for just those last two guys, basically. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That, you so. know, I'm almost looking at KJ Henry and Casey two Hill. And then, uh, you know, we still got William Bradley King in the mix in there. Holy yep. crap. He's still there too. And so he's developing, you know, maybe one of these guys steps up. I love F.A. Obata. He's great. He's a little older. Someone could just, you know, maybe they make the choice. Maybe James Smith Williams over F.A. Uh, uh, who knows? Maybe one of these veterans gets outplayed and replaced. Um, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. not rooting for any one person. I'm just rooting for that, for that. Uh, defensive line group to get better. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. yeah. They look great. They did. Well, there's, we got, since we don't have a lot of linebackers, <laughs> no. we play, well, we do that four to uh, four to five. So we got uh Jamin's back. Yep. And we got Cody Barton from Seattle. Who's basically, you know, taking over uh, for Cole, right? Yeah. I mean, he's going to be the mic. Exactly. And I'm, uh, kind of to me, kind of a similar player. Although I will say this for Cody, um, he just didn't get a chance to play much in Seattle behind a lot of great linebackers. Yeah. So yeah. I remember watching um, him when I was in Seattle, and he was always on the he was always on the special teams. So he was yeah. great in special teams. It was always Cody Barton in on the tackle. Cody yeah. Barton in on the tackle. He was a gunner. Yeah, he I like his great. personality. I've seen him in a couple of interviews. He's pretty funny. He's very honest, very straightforward about things. Um, just funny guy, kind of cool. I mean, he's just a refreshing kid because he, you know, not a kid, but he's a young guy and he, but he's very honest about things. I mean, he even the simple thing. He just talked about, Oh my God, this humidity is killing me. He said it, he goes, man, you know, in Idaho, this is dry as a bone where I'm from or Utah, I think is where he's from. And so he said, yeah, but he said, it's good. He's getting used to it. He's everyone's sweating their brains out. So he's a good kid. Now we got to talk about Jamin. Uh, we just real quickly without yeah. beating it down. He's in some, he's in some trouble because he had that speeding thing His third, I would say speeding event mm -hmm. now that he's, that he's had in mm -hmm. a couple of years. And uh, they sent a second plea agreement and the judge shot that down. He didn't like it. Right. Yeah. They were asking just for eight days to do in jail and looking at his past record, um, the judge is looking at, you know, that thing he did in the December before that he was speeding and then the whole uh, DeShazer Everett thing. And uh, he's going, no, this guy, he doesn't seem to be getting it. And so he's probably looking, you know, a couple of weeks, I would imagine. Yeah, eight wants, days ain't enough. Might, and wants to put him in for about three weeks. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, basically, it's, uh, you know, Kaliki Hudson would have to step up. We have a lot of the same guys, Milo Weifler, DeJon Harris are all back there. Mm -hmm. um, they're not a whole ton of depth, but, you know, when you basically play two linebackers, I don't know. So that, you know, hopefully he gets a plea deal in. They put in a substantial plea deal here soon, but I, I don't think his next, his next court date is until August 31st. Okay. Still, though. So, yeah, so. I, my whole thing with him with that is that, you know, uh, where's his head at when he's playing football? If that's hanging over his head or all this stuff is going on, what is his focus on his game? And what does it say about his decision-making process that got him into these things in the first place? So, uh, you know, all the other, you know, 
you know, modeling good behavior and all these kinds of things. And uh, so I just doesn't look good for him. He really would have to show somehow. No, I guess he's been that's last stuff happened a year ago, March. Yeah. So he's been clean at least since then. Hell, he had better have gotten it by now. So maybe he's cleaned up a little bit. I think he should do his time. I, you know, I think the judge is right, man. You got to yep. go to jail for a while. I'm sorry. I don't give people like that a pass because he's on my football team and because yeah. I want to win. He's got to, he's got to do his time just like everybody. Is that where you or I? I'd be yep. sitting in jail for six months. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I can't afford high dollar lawyers and shit like that. So, yeah. Yeah, three speeding events, you know, you know, or or let's say you had three assaults over mm. 10 years. OK, I mean, you still got a problem. But if you had three assaults over two years, mm. you got to go to jail. If you have yeah. three high speed events over 10 years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this yeah. is two years, dude. All yeah. this. So, yeah, I agree. I just hope they get it done. Kind of sad. I like the way Kaliki played last year. So mm -hmm. uh, I prefer to see Jamin, but I don't, you know, Cody Barton and Kaliki out there. I think we'd be we'd be fine with that. Kaliki looking good. I saw in early, early practices, he was looking real sharp and people were saying great things about him. So and over the last couple of years, too, we've seen some sparks out of him every now and then. He kind of just seems to ebb and flow kind of up and down. So let's hope we catch him on his upswing. Yep. So, yeah. So and now, man, we go to our corners. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting. You know, we know that William Jackson is long gone. Um, oh we got our, you know, we got Kendall Fuller coming back probably in his last year. Um, and then, um, you know, Benjamin St. Just is in there, the rookie Emmanuel Forbes. Um, and then even, you know, Jatari, you know, Jartavius Martin, Quan Martin, who's basically, they're looking at, uh, he's been looked at as a slot guy, he plays safety, uh, you know, he's kind of a jack of all trades. So I, that's going to take a while to finish up to see who's playing where and who goes to the slot because no one seems to really know because really Forbes, Emmanuel Forbes was an outside cover guy. And I know they're trying guys. Didn't, I mean, I think uh, St. Juice played some slot. A little bit. Uh, he did. Before. Yeah. He did. So I'm just not sure where they're at with that, but um, they're trying everybody out. So, but I mean, once again, I said it before, it's a good problem to have. They'll get it figured out. And I just think by drafting these two young guys was really smart. This room needed some youth, man. I mean, they needed to, you know, you can't go, I mean, Danny Johnson, 30, you know, you know, Kendall Fuller, 29, uh, you know, they, they needed to do something. Cause I think this is Kendall's probably his last year, you know, so at his age and his contract. So um, I'm glad they extended Danny Johnson, gave him a two year deal. Christian Holmes comes back, you know, the, the mm. usual kind of guys, yeah. you know, to, I mean, yeah. even, you know, uh, Castro Fields is there and Rashad Wild Goose are in the mix. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a good group. Troy Apke. <laughs> Troy, how does Troy do it, man? Just, he just won't. Troy won't go away. Dang it, man! Uh, so you know, uh, guys look really good. I'm really happy yeah. with that. I mean, God, you can't you can't complain about that for a second. So good backups nope. there. I always liked, uh, uh, you know, uh, Danny Johnson. He's like Kalike. He shines sometimes and not other times. So yeah, yeah, those guys yep. look good. He turned it around. Remember last year at this time, they got they got pissed at him, man. They put him on the practice squad. Yeah. And that's when they went out inside uh, Castro Fields and Rachad Wild Goose. And we were just sitting there going, what the hell did Danny do? Yeah. I thought for sure. he, But he must have turned it around because they signed him to a two-year deal. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so that's good. Got a little uh, guy kind of came back. So look at these safeties. Um, Cameron Curl and Derek Forrest. I'm, what a pair. I mean. Hell Yeah fantastic i mean two guys i'm hoping i think as things go here during camp i think cameron gets paid i think he'll get his contract and that'll be good um he deserves it but you know once again those two guys paired with the dbs we just talked about that's an insane group of dbs out there and the way they like to shift them around buffalo nickel you know and the thing about Quan martin that i always liked um about him you know we were talking before there are certainly guys with a skill set who can play corner safety slot and can move around. And that, that's really, really good, but that's different than a guy who did it. You know what I mean? And Quan did it. Quan was moved. He was asked, 
different formations, different times in the game to do different things. So he's already shown in the college level, I can move around. I don't have a problem with that. You can nice. bring me up on the line. Yeah, so that's really cool. Gives him a little bit of a head start. So um, happy with all that. Now, you know, we've got the usual guys. I mean, you know, Jeremy Reeves, uh, Percy Butler, who was drafted last year. I mean, those are those are solid guys. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't see why not. You know, then yeah. trailing behind them, you got uh, Rod Gardner and uh, yeah. Terrell somebody. Burgess, Kendall Smith. Yeah, so those yeah. guys were looking at some practice squad guys there. Yeah. Hopefully someone surprises. I kind of hope Percy Butler can step up, but it's going to be hard to uh, bust in and, and take over for Derek Forrest or Cameron Curl, but it's great to have solid depth. Yep. So, yep. But we're looking good there between the front yep. line – and, and our DBs going to put the total squeeze as a defense. So yeah, oh, I think I'm big things from this D. I can't I can't speak to the offense. I think they'll be good, but I cannot say it'll be. It's kind of a mystery, but yeah. for sure, man, this defense, I guarantee it, they're going to kill people. So it just goes back to the same thing we say every year: is the defense needs to just hold, don't let the other team score points, and then all our offense has to do is score 21, 28 points. And win the fucking game. It's, it's That's simple. It. it should be very, very simple. But, you know, Taylor, you know, good. these guys, they couldn't squeeze out more than 19, 20 points a game. And, and our defense was holding last year teams at 20 points, 16 sure. points, 23 yeah. points. Your offense should be able to score more points than that and, and win the game. So we're yep. still looking at that same process that we've always looked at, but now hopefully with a better offense. So. Yep, I agree. So now, interestingly, we go to our uh, special teams with uh, <laughs> we got Cameron Cheeseman, the long snapper. We got Tress Way. I think that's that's uh, that's in ice right there. I think they're the man. But now we brought in some competition for Joey. Yeah, thank God. Yeah, I, it had to happen. Uh, you, yeah. you just can't be missing extra points, dude, and uh, it, you just can't do it. So yeah. uh, you know. Man. It was funny. Uh, coach threw shade on Joey when they were, he got asked a question about the kicker coming in for the competition. He said, yeah, last year he, he made 100% of his point after attempts. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> what a burn. Joe, you know? Poor just, just Joey. Man. Lit it right in there. And I was like, damn, uh, dude. Kicking the ball. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> so, yeah. Now they got right. Turner. Yeah, well, he is. He's darn right. Because you know what? That just <laughs> – even if it doesn't have anything that do with your score, if you're going to win or, or even in the game, it doesn't make a difference either way. It's the first quarter, it's seven to seven who gives a shit. Right. But at the end yeah. of the day, it just sends tremors through the whole squad. Like, Oh God, this guy, what you know? Like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Missing, you know, it's like a guy who goes out and grabs some guy's helmet and throws him on the ground and gets yeah. a 15 yard personal foul. It, it's in the first quarter. It may yeah. not have anything to do with the rest of the game, but the whole squad, like, it's like, God, ah, we, yeah. it's, it's just a dagger. Like, what were you doing? Yeah. You know, come on, him. dude. It's, it's come yeah, you can't trust him. Right. Yeah. When the yep. game's on the line, you just were like, Whoa, fuck, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, well, it's the, good to see. Uh, I don't know if that uh, Bagley, Badgley guy is going to take it, but it's good to have that. Yep. Good to have that uh, competition. So I'd say keep him <clears> on the practice squad, too. So, yeah. And then uh, you started to say we're getting to our returners. So that's, you know, it was Antonio Gibson last year doing it, right? On the kickoffs. And it was, and yeah, it was yeah. It was punch, really, right? yeah, it was weird. And then they had him, he was fielding the ball at the two a couple times. And, and there was just, I didn't like, I just, just like felt like miscommunication. Um, and they got Dax Milne at punting, who we know is a great fair catcher, but is not dynamic. Um, I have no idea where that's going. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I really do hope for someone like, you know, Casimir Allen to step up and, and, and just take over. Um, but I just haven't heard enough of it. I just looking all over scrounging. I've watched a few shows. It seems like from the beginning of June till now, it, he, I haven't heard a lot of buzz about Casimir Allen. So I don't know if he's battling a hamstring or what, but it, it just sort of the buzz went away. So yeah. Uh, well, he'll get his chance in preseason, man. You know, he'll be back there returning kicks and punts, so he can show yeah. us then, right? Yeah, I hope so. It's like I we were talking earlier. I watched that uh, Cleveland game last night, and they're 
their guy, their punt returner, boy, here comes the punt. He's on like three or four yard line. It hits him right, bricks it right in his hands, and the ball rolls out of bounds. So the Browns <laughs> got to take the ball on the four. It's like, dude, <laughs> catch what the fucking idiot. ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, we don't want to have anything like that. So speaking of the Browns, yeah. uh, they won, and yep. we do play them uh, next Friday. It's going to be a 7.30 in the evening game. I don't think it's going to be on TV anywhere. So I don't know if uh, yeah, Yahoo's going to run the little uh, uh, graphic or not. So we'll look and see about that. But yeah. we are going to do – did we cover everything on, on the 90-man? Yep. Are you happy we with got that? everything in there, man. Okay. And I'm so, very happy with it. Yeah, just just got to watch the cuts. Okay, and so we're going to get that chance uh, this Friday for that game. And I think me and you should do a – we'll do a, a pregame for the Browns coming out like next Wednesday or next Thursday for you all to just as things yeah. get closer and cinch things up a little tighter and make sure no injuries and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, and give our view of what the game's going to look like. And uh, we're excited. Here we are. We're up and running. What the football? Yeah. Back in action. Whew. Yep. Well, good deal, man. Good. First show of the season. So we'll get on track and we'll get going, start our regular format, uh, you know, do a show, you know, before the games, mm -hmm. do a follow-up show, that kind of stuff, and just kind yeah. of keep keep the ball rolling on what the football. Yeah. Yeah. Big things are going to happen for this team. Let's hope. It looks like things are turning around. Man, I don't so. They really do. Yeah. All right, All right man. Good first show. So we'll do Wednesday or Thursday, right? Sounds good. Uh, for the yeah, for Cleveland. All right, man. Good show. Thanks, everybody. All right, man. See you guys.